Okay, so Squid Game is packed with easter eggs, hidden details and a lot of clues that hint towards its eventual reveal. The show has taken the world by storm and after watching it three times since its release, we've come across some mind-blowing details in it that make it even better. Heavy spoilers ahead, so if you haven't seen it then I'm putting a red light on the video right now. If you enjoy the breakdown then please smash the thumbs up button and make sure you subscribe for videos like this each and every day. With out of the way, thank you for clicking this, now let's get into our Squid Game breakdown. Okay, so the opening of Squid Game may be confusing at first. We watch as the convoluted rules are explained and see kids play it who are of course Gihon and Sangwoo. This flashback is key as it foreshadows how the game will end, which was of course with a round of Squid Game. We jump forward to an adult Gihon who we learn is a lifelong gambler that's always betting on the wrong horse. Due to his addiction and need to make his life better, he's actually the perfect person to participate in the games. The idea of him betting on horses of course foreshadows the future as it's explained to him that Squid Game is very much the same thing just with people being the ones that are bet on. In a way he's similar to the Southern Gentleman VIP who keeps picking the wrong contestant. This would foreshadow Jun Ho's death at the hands of the frontman as the VIP would say I always pick losers. He picked Jun Ho to pleasure him only for the character to turn around and attack him. Jun Ho was then caught out in this quote unquote game of life and death and he's apparently killed. Though I am still hashtag John Ho is still alive. Now Gihon uses the lucky numbers of 6 and 8 to win, which they do. However, these numbers appear many times in the show. They always represent the middle of the herd in a race, and the numbers also appear in this fashion just before the bridge challenge. As one of the VIPs explains, everyone goes for the middle and that is to find safety when threatened. It's better to stay amongst the people instead of taking your own risks, but that strategy also proves to be very, very stupid. 6 also appears again as there are 6 games that take place over 6 days and the religious player would later choose the number 6 as it represents the day God made humans in Christianity. Funnily enough, Gihon won 4.56 million at the horse track and this moment is just some amazing attention to detail. Now Sabiuk does end up helping Gihon later on in the bridge game and this may be her paying him back after she pickpockets him early on. Gihun's nice nature would be foreshadowed as even after being chased by violent loan sharks he would help her when he thought she simply fell over. Now these loan sharks offer some interesting parallels when they threaten Gihun's kidney. This is similar to how the body parts of the losers in the game would be harvested off and it lends weight to the theory that they're all actually working for Ilnam. Down on his luck he needs 10,000 won for a present for his kid which is the same money he gave as a tip to the betting shop teller. This figure would be constant for Gihun as after winning the game and having billions he withdraws just 10,000 won. The prize itself is in a box similar to those that the dead bodies are kept in and it makes for an amazing easter egg in this scene. Now unfortunately due to his money problems Gihun cannot afford to give his daughter a fancy dinner. She's given what her mother perceives as junk food and says how her stepfather bought her steak dinner which puts further pressure on him to get money. Gihun's status was too low to afford it but he would finally be able to have a fancy dinner before the final game but it's, it's just as miserable as this one. Now from here his paths cross with the squid game recruiter who gives him two options. Gihun can either play as red or blue and though it seems like a pretty shallow choice there may be other layers to it. He chooses blue and ends up as a player but the red card is very similar to the colour of the gods uniforms. Now whilst the gods seem like they're in control, they're forced to obey the rules and also killed for even showing their faces. They sleep in cells and are given numbers too so it is possible that they're all part of the operation just like the players. The game theme is kept up throughout the gods CCTV terminals as they're shaped like sit down arcade cabinets. In the series we learn that it's been about 33 years of games so far so it makes sense that Ilnam would get this inspiration from the popular arcades of yesteryear. The god symbols also have a lot of connections to gaming with the triangle circle and square reminding me of a playstation controller. Each shape does have meaning too as circles are workers, triangles are soldiers and squares are the managers. The amount of angles on your helmet also denote your hierarchy as well with no shapes being the lowest tier. The front man has many contours and the VIPs have a ridiculous amount right up to the southern gentleman who appears to have the highest out of all of them which is why he can do what he wants. Elam's mask also has a massive amount on them but we'll talk about that later on in the video. Now squares, circles and triangles also appear throughout the series at numerous points. When the group play red light green light we can see them above the gates at the door. Next to the gates are fake metal windows 
and these are made up of the shapes circles, triangles and squares. The card also has the shapes on them and the layout of Squid Game is of course made up of squares, circles and triangles. When Il Nam visits his quote unquote house in the marbles game, you can also catch the shapes on the gates outside of it, further hinting to him being the one who's behind it. Now back to the game and the idea of people playing with their bodies is set up here as every time that Gihan loses he gets a painful slap but if he wins he gets money. Now I'm not sure how lucky Gihan is getting the chance to play a game for billions as I'd have noped right out of there just seeing the creepy doll for red light green light. However if the series hasn't ruined your life you can visit the doll at Makaland Horse Carriage Museum. Now speaking of people whose lives have been ruined the guy whose number is on the card has also complained that he's received non-stop calls since the show aired and I feel so sorry for him. Now with his winnings with the recruiter, Gihan heads off to treat his mother which is reminiscent of how Sang Woo would ask Gihan to give his mother money before he ended his life in the final game. Gihan goes to get picked up and the password is red light green light which foreshadows the first game. Upon waking up, Gihan realises that his number is 456 signifying that he's the lowest there with Ilnam, the game's architect, being number one. Ilnam even translates to first man or number one man, giving us an indication of his status. The prize money is of course divisible by Gihun's number and this gives us a further clue to one being in charge. Gihun didn't pick up on him saying he knew what was going on and he underestimated him instantly, much like how we all did. The pair also meet with Gihun standing over Ilnam as he's in a bed, which mirrors the final scene that the two share together. Now inside the room with all the beds, we get a clue on the walls as to what each game will actually be. However, in a dark twist of fate, the clues only fully start to reveal themselves when people die after red light, green light. However, we see every single game on the wall, which ends with the final one being the squid game. Now music is a prominent part of the show, with the song Blue Danube being played before and after each and every game. This piece of music by Johann Strauss II was commissioned and later urged to be light and upbeat as his nation Austria had lost to Prussia in the Seven Week War. This was intended to keep players upbeat before and after the slaughter, much like the citizens of Austria after that conflict. Other parts of the preamble before going to the game are the cartoony bright coloured stairs which are similar to images created by MC Escher. His work of infinite and wacky stairs symbolises the monotony of climbing up for nothing. It matches up here as the contestants are in a loop and also most of the time climbing up for nothing. Now Il Nam is the key in the red light green light game as he smiles showing he's happy and more alive than ever. We know he was in hospital as that's where he would later be picked up from but unlike the other contestants he would not be gassed. He is smiling as it's probably the last time he'll play one of his favourite games and he's enjoying being a participant instead of a watcher. The creepy girl robot has a squid game called hairpin in her hair and we are treated to another hint that Ilnam is special as he's not scanned by her. Each of the players gets a green overlay indicating that they're a target, however Ilnam is completely fine and probably not in any danger. Interestingly the person directly next to him isn't highlighted either and it is possible that he has a protective ring around him so that the machine can't even fire close to him in case it kills him by accident. Now the father son esque relationship between Ilnam and Gihan is one of the most enthralling parts of the show. When they aren't helping each other, they are always incredibly close and finishing games by seconds. It happens in the red light green light game with Ilnam gloating that he beat him, but it would later reverse in marbles with Gihan taking that. His deathbed is where the final game between the two takes place and Gihan would beat him with seconds to go as the character passes away. Though we will never know if he knew that he lost the game, it doesn't matter as this final scene shows that people will help one another and that there is decency beyond what he believed. It also paints the two as opposites and sets up Gihan trying to take down the squid game. Now Ilnam also gives a hint that the pair might be related as Gihan says he can't drink the milk and instead asks for chocolate. Ilnam says that his son used to do the same thing and that he'd beat him for it. On a personality level, it's possible that the two also echo one another as both leave their families in order to get involved with the games. Now the vote to continue the game leads to some very very interesting moments and it contains buttons that are green and red. The vote starts in reverse order which makes Gihan seem important but really it's done to ensure that Ilnam has the deciding vote should it come down to it. Sang Woo and Ali end up in town together and this foreshadows their partnership in the marble game. At this point the 10,000 won appears again 
as is the amount Sangwoo gives to poor Ali in this moment. Yeah, it's not all you, you give to him, is it? You traitor. Now, in this hiatus, a number of deaths are also foreshadowed. Dak Su jumped off a bridge to escape the gangsters, and he would later die after falling off the glass bridge. Ali took the money from his boss, but he was later eliminated when Sangwoo stole his marbles. Sabiuk would threaten a man with a knife to his neck, but would die the same way, bringing everything full circle from this. On top of this, Sangu tried to end his life in a bathtub wearing a tuxedo, and this foreshadows his final act in which he does this in the rain. Dexu's minions would turn on him and lose respect for him, just like the marble game, and it's sort of like poetry they rhyme. Had to do one of those. Now, during the quote unquote chance meeting with Ilnam and Gihun, Ilnam says how outside is torture, hinting that he would rather be inside enjoying his creation. Poor Gihun also meets his ex wife and leaves his umbrella by accident at their flat. This gives us a hint at him always forgetting his umbrella, which he says is his reason for choosing the shape in the now TikTok famous Honeycomb game. Now, there's also one key moment here that becomes so heartbreaking once you finish the show. Jun Ho spends the episode following up on leads about the game and tracks down Gi Hun and asks him for help to find out what's going on. Gi Hun could have actually put an end to the game at this point but instead he participates in it and wins, which puts him on a course to attempt to end things anyway. The players all return, and it seems like Ilnam wasn't actually knocked out, as we see him moving whilst he should be asleep. We start to see the form of our squad in episode 3, and Ilnam further hints he is powerful by saying he won't die easily, which yes, he won't. He's referred to as the old major who's been in the army all their life, and as we learn, he's been running the squid game for years. In another slight hint, Ilnam says that their meals are essentially what his wife would make him and their kids for lunch, which further ties the setup to him. Sangwoo's morality breakdown also starts here in the Honeycomb game, as he allowed people to basically get shapes that would leave them in very difficult positions. Diu continues his theme of turning on people after they help him by accepting the lighter, and 111's doctor skills are shown for the first time as he handles the game with ease. This makes sense why he's later taken to harvest organs for the gods, and it's nice that it's set up here. The scale of this inside job is shown as one of the gods deletes footage at the start of episode 4, showing there was more illegal activity inside the organisation itself. Get it? Organisation. Organisation, anyway, moving on. Now, some of the characters are fascinating mirror images as well, with Sai Byuk and Mia Niao being opposite sides of the same coin. Also, yeah, I'm apologies for butchering all these names. Now, while both are desperate survivors and ruthless, even when helping each other, Cybiuk sees being a lone wolf as the best means to getting to survive, whilst Mian Yu uses her craziness and tenacity to blend in with the strongest. It's why she says she's good at things, unless she's not, because she uses other people's skills. As the Honeycomb game wraps up, we see how Jun Ho learns the hierarchy as he's scorned for being in the wrong place. Later on, he swaps costumes with his manager, which is why he has power later. However, the doctor is fully in with the gods, and you can actually tell they try and keep some alive during the executions, so that later on, he can harvest the organs from their bodies easier. Further hints that the game is rigged for Ilnam happen, as the brawl is called off instantly when he says that he's scared. His bed is also the only one that isn't flipped, showing the respect that those in authority have for him. Miao Nyo has a little coitus session with the gangster, and he says how he thinks that she will be responsible for his death that night. While he didn't die when he predicted, she does kill him in the end. She is mugged off quite a lot during the tug of war game, and is forced to seek a new team who call her old woman. Further hints about the ill noun twist occur here, as he knows how to win at tug of war. The guy is an expert in all of the games, as he of course played them when he was growing up. Now, during the tug of war scene, we even see a hint of how Ilnam would have escaped should his team have failed. Each person has locks on them to attach them to the rope, which is of course what ensures you go down with your team. However, though Ilnam initially had locks like the rest of the team, they are gone when he wins. It shows he would have just slipped off the rope if it came down to it, and shout out to YouTuber Maxi Doxy for spotting this really cool detail. Now it's around this time that Jun Ho also uncovers the data on the games, and when looking through the files, the 2021 starts at number 2 instead of 1. This further hints towards Ilnam being off the books, and actually in charge, as he's not keeping records on himself. After the game, it sort of foreshadows how Ilnam and Gi-hun's relationship will go, as the latter gives him something to cover his wet trousers. 
I think Ilnam actually tricked everyone with this, as beside his head you can catch an empty bottle of water, which he likely tipped over his pants. However, Gion is extremely kind here, and stays behind to help him. Ilnam then reciprocates it by giving Gihan the number one jacket, which may foreshadow how he could end up in control of the games. Some have said how this is to protect him, as the gods won't do anything to harm player one. On top of this, I see it as a changing of the god, as the most important players are swapping place, and it's very much a passing of the torch. Gihan's kindness is shown once more, as he opts to play with Ilnam in a team game, whereas everyone thinks you need someone strong. He didn't want him to die due to being the odd one out, potentially getting executed, and thus he picked him to be by his side. Ironically, Gihan's kindness actually quote unquote killed Ilnam, or at least it ended the game for him. Whilst he didn't die, if he'd simply left him, Ilnam simply would have skipped this round and went through to the next one. Ilnam would have definitely known this, and this is why the day before he pretended to be very ill and also weak. When the selection process was going on, he also sat at the back, rejected being chosen and then moved out the way in order to avoid being picked as a player. He's the only one who didn't go looking for someone to team up with, because he knew that remaining behind would be a free pass. Ilnam once more shows his knowledge and connection to the games, by saying that the Marble One takes place in the area where he used to live. He goes looking for his house, and comes across a perfect recreation of it, which lets us know that it was modelled on the home he used to have. Interestingly, Gihan also says that the alleyway in it resembles where he used to live, so potentially this is another clue to them being father and son. Now a big hint that he drops here is that Ilnam says he used to stand behind a pole and watch his son and their friends play games together. This was completely unbeknownst to them, and it mirrored the way that Ilnam would watch the players in the game without them knowing. However, he also says that he really wanted to play with them, which mirrors how he would enter the games in order to participate. In the Marbles game, Chi Yun is paired with Sei Byuk. They talk about the possibility of leaving and going on an island retreat together, and in a brutal twist of dramatic irony, they were all of course on an island together. Gihan does show his gambling addiction once more, as Ilnam knows that he will bet it all just for a chance to win. Now if Ali's death didn't rip your heart out, seeing poor Ilnam die was gut-wrenching, as Gihan had to go to the dark side and abandon his morals. Knowing what we know now, it becomes obvious that Ilnam wasn't killed at this point, as not only is he the only player that we don't see die, but there's also no blood or a body when we cut to the wide shot. Now Ilnam reveals himself as the Owl in Episode 7, which makes so much sense as we see his hands which look just like his. The Owl is fitting as it's a spirit animal and is wise and fiercely intelligent. Having a spirit animal of an Owl can bring you luck, which matches up really well with the character as he brings wisdom and luck throughout the entire game. Notably, Ilnam doesn't meet with the rest of the VIPs, as he's had his fix and decided that watching is just enough for now. At the end of the show, he said he made the game for entertainment, and now he's finally had the itch scratched so to speak, which does explain his absence. During the bridge game, we have the mention that it's human nature to hide in a pack of people. This has been a theme of the show as groups formed amongst the contestants, and this obsession with being in a group or team has now become their downfall due to how the bridge game works. Being cautious and at the back finally pays off after being the worst strategy, and it means that Gihan has the easiest time. Now, should Ilnam have made it at this point, I think that the lights would have been left on so that he could see the thickness of the glass, and perhaps he didn't want to do this game, as yeah, those heights are terrifying. Once the bridge game is over, we are left with our three survivors, and it makes for an amazing couple of final episodes. They are treated like VIPs, and then given a steak dinner, calling back to Gihan's daughter. Obviously, they have ranked up as the food is opulent, and they're given fancy clothes so they no longer have to wear the green tracksuits. They are at a triangle table, and if you recall, the triangle is a step above the average worker for the gods. It's a subtle hint they've been promoted based on their game performance, and it sort of just ties everything together. Sadly, my favourite character gets taken out, and we're left with just two. The final game is Squid Game, and just like the one with the recruiter, they're given a choice of offense or defense. After the last death, we see a big change with Gihan no longer playing cautiously and at the back. This time he chooses offense, signifying his change to be a more offensive player, which we will also see at the end with his rip-roaring rampage of revenge beginning. Gihan ends up winning and this calls back to the beginning in which he also took that. 
Once all is said and done, yay, Gihon has his winnings. And if it was me, yeah, I'd have bought a shiny Charizard and a hell of a lot of Funko Pops, the limited edition ones, with the Chase, the Chase sticker on them. Now the front man toasts to him and explains the horse metaphor. Due to the findings at the end of episode 5, we know that he was also a player and that he likely won because he's still alive. Perhaps he became bored with his winnings and ended up joining the game in order to oversee it. The front man, Ilnam and Gihun are all people that ended up putting their family to the side in order to be part of the games and it's nice that there's these little parallels going on with all the characters. The front man is somewhat an opposite to Gihun as both are winners but one chose to participate in an authority role whilst the other wants to take the organisation down. I do think that Jun Ho is alive as he's shot in the same spot as Inho and the latter does survive so it makes sense that he would too. Potentially he's had to lay low for a year to wait for the games to start again so that he can gather evidence as it was all likely destroyed during his escape. Gihun withdraws 10,001 again with this being the amount that was needed at the start to impress his daughter. After his mother's death we get a time jump of one year and see that his life hasn't changed all that much. Similar to the VIPs he's found little enjoyment in the fortune that he's been blessed with and he's just very very miserable. However, the big reveal happens, which is one of the most tense scenes I think I've ever seen. Ilnam, the surrogate father figure in the game for Gihun, is revealed to be the architect, and oh my god, who saw this coming? I didn't. I know some of you in the comments did, but I definitely didn't. Now, we learn that he was simply bored and needed entertainment, and I don't know why he didn't just go to space like the rich men in the West. The connection between the pair continues as Ilnam was a money lender. And Gihun was, of course, a victim of them. Of course, each contestant had debts, but Gihun's was literally as a result of debts to moneylenders, so Ilnam very much forced him through it all as his puppet. They play one last game to see if humanity is truly good, which, thank God, it turns out to be. After this, Gihun decides to go on a revenge tour and he dyes his hair red. The director talked about this matter with the Radio Times and said that Gihun's red hair represents that he will never be able to go back to his old self and it's also a sign of his rage. Red is of course the colour that was associated with the gods in the games and it shows how he's very much switched from a player into an authority position. It's the perfect way to end the show and seeing the games are still going on leaves you very hyped for next time. Overall, this might be one of the most complex shows today on Netflix as each setup or shot has a purpose and reason behind it. It's very much a lightning in the bottle series that has struck a chord that's made it a complete global phenomenon. The game itself is of course a metaphor for how the rich play with the lives of normal people and there's a lot of similarities to capitalism and how many are clamouring over each other whilst the rich rule all. Overall, it was fantastic and if you spotted anything we missed then I'd love to hear it below. We are running a competition right now and giving away 3 copies of the Phase 3 MCU box set on the 30th of October and all you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the series. We pick the comments at random at the end of the month and the winners of the last one are on screen right now so if that's you then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch then make sure you check out our breakdown of all the theories that we have on the show including the cards one everything that's going on and yeah it's absolutely bonkers so go head over there right after this if not then thank you for sitting through this video i've been paul and i'll see you next time take care peace